located here over my right shoulder, you can see a man. Over the past few weeks, I've been concentrating my efforts on a very unique and interesting patch of sky. Located here over my right shoulder, you can see a man. That constellation is named after the famous ancient king, Cepheus, and contains numerous interesting nebulae, birthplaces of stars. Let's go over the images I've managed to put together. Located in King Cepheus's face, we can see the Elephant Trunk Nebula, also known as IC 1396, a magnificent target for beginning astro images. This image comprises 11 hours of data shot over a few nights. Interestingly, I shot this when the moon phase was an average of 92%, so you can see immediately the advantages of narrowband imaging, being able to capture your image while the moon is still extremely bright in the sky, which is not something that you can usually do with one shot color imaging. The image is done in what's called the SHO palette. That means that the light frequency corresponding to sulfur 2 is mapped to the color red. Green is mapped to the strongest signal, hydrogen alpha, and blue is mapped to O3, oxygen 3, and is the weakest. However, you can see in my image here, there's very little green, and it appears as a bicolor image, namely orange and blue. I've deliberately removed the color green to create a bicolor image in this palette here. Muted natural toning. You can see that the stars are extremely small and well controlled. That is a natural benefit of using narrowband imaging. A lot of light is being rejected by the filter and therefore the stars don't get an opportunity to bloat anywhere near as much as they would with one shot color. In order to have extremely small stars in this image, Rejecting two of the channel's stars and using just the small stars from HA combined with some post-editing in PixInsight using Russell Croman's Blur Exterminator, I was able to achieve tiny stars in this image here. Back here in Stellarium now, we can see that King Cepheus's left hand is gripping a star. If we zoom in closely on this, we can see that just below his left palm, is a feature called the Bubble Nebula. Now what's fascinating about the Bubble Nebula is it contains a star that's 45 times the mass of our sun, one million times as bright. And the Bubble Nebula itself is five and a half thousand times larger than our own solar system. Near the Bubble Nebula, we have two other features, two other nebulae, the Lobster Claw Nebula, which doesn't actually appear in Stellarium and North Lagoon Nebula. So here's my image that I've come up with. Now you can see the bubble nebula very bright in the bottom left. And just to the right of that, the massive feature is the lobster claw nebula. We'll take a closer look in just a second. And then towards the top left of frame, you can see the bright North Lagoon or brain nebula. Here in the bottom left of frame, we've got a closer look at the bubble nebula there. To the bottom left of that, as you're looking at it, the Cassiopeia salt and pepper cluster. Let's go and take a look at the massive lobster claw nebula now. It actually looks like something you would find in one of our own seas here on Earth. And then at the top of the frame, offset from the center, we can see the very intriguing North Lagoon Nebula there that looks like it's shooting through space, trailing dust behind it. In the first two images that I've shared with you that I've captured in the Cepheus constellation, have both been at around that 10 hour mark for total integration. This image here, pretty much bang on 10 hours, and the Elephant Trunk Nebula was about 11 hours. Now, the image I'm about to show you was completely different because it's 27 hours of data. And so if we look at King Cepheus as a whole, we can see a little box flashing on his left knee. This is where the feature is, and it's called NGC 7822, also known as the Skull Nebula. Here's a closer look at the Skull Nebula. And to look at it in Stellarium, it looks rather unassuming, not all that appealing to dedicate a lot of imaging time to. 
However, that's what I love about this hobby. You really can't tell what you're gonna get from a particular region of space just by having a look at Stellarium. Sometimes you just need to roll up your sleeves and get stuck in, and then you're rewarded with an absolute treat. So here it is, NGC 7822. And as you can see from the title I've given it, King Cephas's left knee. So again, similar to the Elephant Trunk Nebula IC 1396, we can see towards the bottom of the frame, if you will, many of these elephant trunk type features, these stalactite type features, bright areas of star formation jutting out towards a central point. However, that is not the most fascinating thing about this image to me. As you can see, as I scroll up through the image, you've got this line that runs from top to bottom of dark nebula dust. And I love that it's there. For me, if it wasn't, the image just wouldn't be the same. The color palette you'll notice has a little bit more green in it. This time I wanted to experiment with trying to achieve that green copper type color that you see on old buildings in Italy and London. And I feel like I've been able to achieve that here and I do feel like it adds a lot to the image. In doing so, what I had to do also was adjust the vibrance and the saturation to give it a more muted look. And I'm really happy with how it's turned out. 